Hello, I'm Tina Stankovic, Bertarelli Foundation Professor and Chair of the Department of Otolaryngology Head Neck Surgery at Stanford. Our ability to communicate complex emotions and ideas with music and words distinguishes us as a species. It's not an accident that no culture was ever discovered without music, going back 40 millennia. For me, the treble clef, the one we all remember from school, illustrates three points I would like to make today. First, why hearing? Second, why now? And third, why Stanford? So let's start with the first one, why hearing? The coiled innermost part of the clef reminds us of the cochlea. It's the coiled organ responsible for converting sound waves into electrical signals that are transmitted to the brain. It's tiny and fragile, and it's embedded in the hardest bone in the body, deep within the skull. How tiny? It's the size of Lincoln's upper face on a penny, with a total liquid volume of just three raindrops. Today, the World Health Organization estimates that one and a half billion people worldwide have hearing loss, or one out of every six people. The economic cost of unaddressed hearing loss is estimated to be nearly a staggering trillion dollars annually. But statistics, as shocking as they are, don't convey the suffering caused by hearing loss. Hearing is critical to human connection, an aspect that makes life worth living. And there is increasing evidence that hearing is critical to mental health and to cognition. Clinically, challenges abound. We cannot get clear images of the cochlea on MRI and CT scans, and we cannot biopsy the cochlea without destroying it. Even after over a century of focused research and two Nobel Prizes later, the functioning of this anatomical marvel has its mysteries, and treatment options for hearing loss are very limited. Which brings me to the second point, why now? The bold upward shooting part of the cliff captures our story. Dr. Jackler started the Stanford Initiative to Cure Hearing Loss 15 years ago. I'm pleased to report that the ambitious moonshot that he launched has made tremendous progress and has now reached a pivotal point. We have recruited over 100 scientists and clinicians to the team with deep expertise in a range of areas, including stem cell biology, regenerative medicine, genetics, structural biology, and even mathematics and computational modeling. And we work together collaboratively, collegially, and synergistically. Which brings me to the third point, why Stanford? Look at the downward, deep-reaching, and boldly upcoming part of the clef. Thanks to support from many of our benefactors and from the National Institutes of Health, or NIH, we are now leading in advancements to address deep problems across the field of hearing and lift people who may be bordering on despair. For that, we need more fuel to propel our progress. I'll give you just three examples, but there are many more. First, the imaging probe. After 10 years of work, we are eager to move into clinical testing of a tiny microendoscope that could revolutionize our ability to make definitive diagnoses of the various causes of hearing loss and thereby guide personalized therapies. Second, the role of the brain. Stanford is making significant progress in understanding the role of the brain, not just the ear, in hearing disorders, including the widespread problem of tinnitus or ringing in the ears. To address this problem, we are planning a clinical trial of transcranial magnetic stimulation, adapting protocols developed at Stanford for different indications. Third, preventing damage by medications. Some common medications, such as certain antibiotics, can cause permanent hearing loss. So, Dr. Ritchie, Dr. Chang, and their team are pioneering new ways to make those antibiotics safer by redesigning their chemical structure. 
the Stanford environment is built to translate discoveries on the lab bench into the clinic, benefiting people everywhere. This is a key ingredient in our initiative success. Finally, a brief postscript. If you're already a benefactor, thank you once again. If you're not yet involved, please consider getting involved in propelling this critical work forward. We are tapping all sources of support for this effort, and we are actually leaders in NIH support. However, we also need flexible funding, which only philanthropic support can provide. These flexible resources allow our brilliant faculty to pursue their boldest, riskiest ideas, to collaborate quickly, and to test their ideas in the clinic. I want to thank you for watching and giving me this opportunity to share our excitement about this pivotal stage in Stanford's audacious quest to cure hearing loss. Thank you.